This is a disease on diphtheria, I mean a disease report on diphtheria um, by me, Deshana Kawash. Um, the symptoms and signs of diphtheria, to, the two hallmark signs of this disease um, are a pseudomembrane and vulnic. The pseudomembrane will be present on the larynx, pharynx, or tonsils. Um, the bull neck is um, how this young boy's um, neck is swollen, his lymph nodes um, are swollen, and there's a lot of inflammation in that area. Um, very, very severe diphtheria can cause heart, kidney, and nervous tissue damage, and um, the other symptoms and signs are nasal drainage, strider, sore throat, and fever. Um, so there are two types of diphtheria. There's cutaneous diphtheria and respiratory diphtheria. And um, cutaneous diphtheria results in ulcers, um, like the ulcer on this man's ankle. Um, it's not reportable. It's not a very prevalent or um, prevalent disease in the United States. It doesn't really affect the welfare of many people. Um, respiratory diphtheria actually was really serious in the United States, caused many, many deaths among children under the age of 15, and um, respiratory th diphtheria is actually the disease that results in the bull neck and um, has the pseudomembrane. As you can see on this child's throat, um, there's a pseudomembrane right there, and it's made of inflammatory cells, bacteria, and fibrin. So um, the infectious agent, the bacteria that actually causes this disease is is a Carini bacterium diphtheriae, and um, that is the name of it. The common name is diphtheria um, or cutaneous diphtheria, respiratory diphtheria. Those are the common names of the disease. Um, so C. diphtheriae is a gram-positive facultative anaerobe. Um, as you can see, it's bacillus-shaped, as you can see in this picture right here. Um, it can infect uh, really any part of the body, but where it it mainly affects mucous membranes, um, which results in um, respiratory diphtheria. Uh, it can be spread by droplet contact and direct contact. Um, the reservoir is humans. Um, humans are the only known reservoir of uh, Carini bacterium diphtheriae. And um, the bacteria is actually lysogenic. It is, in fact, only toxic. It only produces a toxin if it has been infected by a virus that carries the tox gene. So I thought that was kind of interesting, um, just that uh, this particular bacteria will not produce toxins in the body unless that bacteria is infected by the particular virus that carries the tox gene. So as for a taxonomy, um, Carini bacterium is a type of actinobacteria. Um, and uh, Corini bacterium can include uh, animal pathogens, plant pathogens, or can even be a part of the normal microbiota in humans. So as for the history of the disease, um, the, this, this disease was the primary cause of child mortality before the 1920s, and that's about when the vaccine was introduced. It was very prevalent in this area of the United States, the Northern Plains, the Southwest, and the Pacific Northwest. The last, the last major outbreak in America was in Seattle in, in the 1970s, and the United States really hasn't had a major problem from diphtheria since then. Um, but the disease is still endemic in other parts of the world, um, like Canada, the Caribbean, Latin America, Africa, and um, Southeast Asia. So um, the reason why uh, diphtheria isn't prevalent in the United States anymore is because of vaccinations. Um, like I said before, it has reduced the incidence of the disease dramatically. And, and an inactivated toxin is delivered through the vaccine. Um, and because it is inactivated, it requires booster shots every 10 years after the age of 15. There are um, different types of shots given to different age groups. Um, if you begin your immunizations in childhood, you'll receive the DTaP. If you begin in adulthood, um, you'll receive three doses of the TD vaccine. Um, and TDAP stands for diphtheria, tetanus, toxoid, and pertussis. So um, as for the diagnosis, um, a physician or healthcare worker can check the patient's antibody levels. If the patient has um, 0 0.01 IUs per mil of the antibody in their blood, they are immune to the disease, um, So, which means that they probably don't have diphtheria. They probably have some other um, illness. And um, 
Diphtheria has to be confirmed by a culture, a positive culture, and an ELEC test is usually also performed to, um, to determine whether the bacteria produces toxins. And so prob probable cases are all cases that haven't been confirmed by a culture. And um, early identification is key to treating any illness, any sickness, any disease. Um, with early identification, contacts with the person infected can be identified. Um, better specimens can be taken and better treatment can al always be provided when a disease or an illness is caught in its early stages and um, also c it can be better contained to prevent the disease from spreading if it is identified early. Um, so Carinibacterium diphtheriae is a um, is a bacteria, so it can be treated by antibiotics. Um, penicillin and erythromycin are two antibiotics that can be used for that. And it also must be treated by the antitoxin. Um, whether it's a confirmed case or a probable case, the antitoxin must be given to the patient and it has to be taken, it has to be um, received from the CDC. And uh, it's also created in horses, which I thought was kind of interesting. And um, as for the mechanism of it, the, path, the pathogenesis, um, the diphtheria toxin is an AB toxin, which means it has two components. Um, fragment A, uh, it uh, inhibits protein synthesis in the whole cell, and fragment B helps fragment A get into the cytosol of the cell. So here's a bigger figure. Um, this is fragment A, and this is fragment B. So um, when uh, the... When the toxin gets to the whole cell, it is cleaved at the surface of the cell, and it gets into the cell by receptor-mediated endocytosis. And inside of that endosome, inside the cell, the fragment B actually helps fragment A get through the endosome and into the cytoplasm. And uh, that's when fragment A actually inhibits fro protein synthesis in the cell. Um, the actual mechanism as to how exactly fragment A gets out of the endosome and into the cytosol of the cell is not very well understood. Um, it's thought that fragment A unravels, um, slips through that lipid bilayer, and then refolds. And if it does do that, I thought that was pretty interesting as well. Um, so all suspected and confirmed cases of diphtheria must be reported to the NNDSS. Um, they want to investigate every suspected um, suspected case of the disease. They want to know the demographics of the person, where the disease was reported, their health history, um, treatment they received, all the results of laboratory testing, vaccination history, and um, information on who the people came in contact with. Um, all those are necessary for um, epidemiologic investigation um, on every incident. So um, here are the references, just in case you guys um, are interested in the references I use for this presentation. Um, so I appreciate you guys watching the presentation, and I hope you